Well, Kathy, I've got 202. Are you uh, ready to go? I, I, we... I think it's that's the, that's the signal there. Uh, Kathy's hanging out at the beach today. I, do, I know. Yeah, Billy made me think about changing my background. <laughs> so I did okay. it. I did it while Gail was explaining how to do it. So I changed my background. Well, as you, uh, okay. as you can see from the PowerPoint on your screen, we're going to be talking about importing video uh, to stream and we'll, uh, adding uh, and adding assessment questions, among other things. But this is the two main focuses of our situation today. I'm joined, if you can see the background, I am joined by this over here is Kaylee. She's pretty much my eight and a half year old Bab. That's pretty much where she spends all day, <laughs> no matter what happens. Um, so today we're going to talk about how to upload a video to stream. And specifically, I'm going to use a PowerPoint presentation to kind of show you how easy that is. Uh, and this is a recorded PowerPoint that I created uh, this morning. And then uh, from there, we'll talk about accessing the transcription tool. Um, and then uh, and uh, we'll also touch a little bit based on editing it. Um, I'll talk about how to share the video. Um, and then you can share the video with uh, individual people or you can create a group from your course. So we'll talk about creating a group and then uh, and we'll also add a quiz to our uh, presentation. So to start with, I'm going to go with a new share here. And I'm going to share another page of uh, another screen and um, you should see a screen that says know your sports scars is that what you are you all seeing that mm -hmm. yes okay yeah. so this is my powerpoint presentation i've actually as you can see by the little speaker down here i've actually recorded this and uh, um, and each of these i just did a quick recording and uh, put some pictures on just threw a little presentation together and this is uh I've saved this and all I'm going to do is, now I have two options um, that I want to really focus on. One of them is save a show, which saves it as a PowerPoint show. And when you save it as a show, your file is about 90% smaller. In other words, it's only 10% the size of an MP4 video file. The other option is to click publish to stream. And when you click publish to stream, um, you, um, you publish it to stream and what this does is it brings it up into your stream account. There's, uh, as long as you're logged in, um, uh, to your, uh, uh, to office 365, um, it, it's going to go that's going to just publish right to uh, Microsoft Stream. So now it's I, publishing. Yes. I have one question, Terry. Um, mm -hmm. I, I imported all of my um, PowerPoint into the 365 that you have up. And mm -hmm. I do not, it does not show publish the stream up, up, up there. Okay. So uh, there is a tab. Up here, is, can you see it where my mouse is? It says yes, recording. Yes, recording. Uh -huh. Okay, so that tab will, if, if you don't have that, you need to set that up. Uh, great question, okay. by the way. So okay. to do that, okay, you'll great. just click on file. Uh -huh. and come down here, uh, excuse me, uh, you go down to file and then options, and you'll click customize ribbon. Uh -huh. and then you wanna check off this recording tab right down here. Okay, super. Okay. Super. And yep. then once you do that, you get the recording tab and you get the option okay. to publish to stream. Because I have the other two, but I didn't have the publish to stream. Okay. Um, yeah, it may be, um, it may be just that they don't have that. Uh, you might want to, um, if you have that recording tab, take it off and put it back on. Um, but you can also check with the help desk. They may have to update your version of Microsoft Office um, okay. Office to, to Office 20, I think it's 2019 now instead of 2016. So it could okay, be your version super. of Office is a little old. Great question. Thank you for asking. Okay, and now I'm going to come back and share my screen again. Find it. Uh, 
and um, so now I'm going to go ahead and go to my uh, Microsoft um, stream account and access that. So the easiest way to get there is to go to your Office 365, is to go to Cardinal Apps. Um, um, you'll go to Cardinal Apps. Let me go back here. Okay, so you should see uh, Cardinal Apps up here. Does everybody see that? No. Yes. Huh? Yes. Okay. So click on Cardinal Apps. That takes you to. Uh, I'm sorry. To click, click on Office 365. Now you will see when you go directly to Office 365. <coughs> this gives you all of these uh, different uh, icons for different tools that you have, and one of them should be Stream. If it's not, if Stream is not up here, it means you've never used it before. So if not, just click on all apps and your stream will be down here. And then once you hit that, it'll actually take you to your Microsoft stream account. And then I'm gonna come up here to my content and click on videos. Okay, so this is the video that I just uploaded. It's still processing. So I actually uh, created another version of it. So I'm gonna go to it, to this, to this video. And um, we can uh, look at it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I have my video. I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to click on update video details. And this is, gives, this is where I add some details to my, uh, to my uh, video. Um, I set permissions and I um, also get it to uh, generate a caption file. Now, an interesting thing is if you go over here and don't change anything on details and you try and generate a caption file, it won't let you, uh, stream won't let you do it. So the, when you come over to details, you, you can, if you want to change the name of the file, but more importantly, you want to click on this drop down for video language and choose English. That way, that generates this checkbox to uh, generate a caption file. Um, a couple of other things that you can do is that then you can share, uh, and you can share with people or you can share with a group. Um, if I'm gonna share with a group, um, then I have to search for my groups. And, uh, and in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and create a group. Uh, Terry? Yes. In, in black, is it possible to get a student group as a group without individually entering each of the students in our class or can we grab a whole cluster did kathy pay you to ask this question because i'm actually <laughs> going to cover that I it's been kathy, burning I it's been kathy burning paid for you me. to ask, ask this question <laughs> well uh yes because i have I'm two gonna, groups uh the the, the short okay. answer is yes you'll have to, good that you have to put in each one individually but I'm gonna show you a shortcut to make okay. it easy to do. Right. Okay, so what I've got is I've got my group. I've got a description here. Access is you've got a couple of public group or private group. This is gonna be a private group. And then you'll click search for people. And what you're gonna do with this is you'll actually go to a Blackboard course. I have a Blackboard, I just happen to have a Blackboard course right here. I'm gonna come down here and scroll all the way down to users and groups and click on users. And then um, I'm gonna minimize the size of this thing. Now there's a way that you can snap this so that um, 
each one of these is on us is is actually on two different pieces of pay, uh, two different windows and you can have them next to each other but see i've got my group i've got my search and then i just come here to users and groups and um whoops and then just highlight the name do a control c for copy and a control v is in victor for paste and um hit enter oops okay why is it not doing this So can we not load it directly into Blackboard from our link and our browser thing? Um, yes, we can, and I'll touch base on that. Okay. Um, yes, you can add this link to Blackboard. Okay. Yes, you can. And so then, as you as I, as I said, uh, let's see. <laughs> Access the private group and add a group members. And, oh, there we go. Okay, and then once I create group, uh, once I create the group, then um, I click on here uh, permissions and allow everyone in your company to browse this video would allow everybody at UIW to browse this to view the video I don't want to do that so what I want to do is I want to add people and then um, I can again add people to this uh, account um, the next thing you'll do is uh, add options you can add options so people can comment on the video do some voice suppression um, and you can download the captions file as well. Terry, I'm I'm um, yes, ma'am. So I have to add all the names when I create the group, and I have to add those same names a second time when I give permissions. That I uh, no, when them. you add the when you you just add the names when you build the group. Now, okay. what I would suggest that you name the group when you do this is you name the group the course name. So if this is, um, you know, this is uh, Nursing 3215, name it Nursing 3215, add the designation, say if you generally have one or two versions of this. And then every semester, you don't have to create a new group. You can just go to the group and edit it and then change out the names of the people that you're adding to the group. Take out the old email addresses from the last year's last semester students and add the new addresses um, um, to this year's students. And Michael, you don't actually have to add students. It does that. Uh, the um, uh, you just put in the 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 uh, email address and it'll be fine. Um, any questions so far? Terry is precious. Is this so that they can get access to it, or is this so they can get permission? But this isn't the way we're going to load it on Blackboard. Um, no, you. There's a said. There's a couple of options here. You can put it in a group, and then you can share it with the group. But you can also upload the video to Blackboard. But do we still have to put their names in so that when we load it, they have permission to access it, or do we not? You can share. Okay. There's 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 sharing, and there's sharing by link. And the second option is to share by link. If you share by link, it just stays with that, with that course. Okay, perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and, I'll, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll show you how to do that as well. Oh, Terry. Um, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Precious, what was your question? Yeah, you mentioned that if you uh, save your uh, PowerPoint just as um, one option, and you said that would, um, have less um, space, mm -hmm. you know? If you just upload it this way to stream, what is the 
spacing or um, the... well there is not a spacing issue because when you upload it to stream you're uh -huh. going to share a link to it to blackboard okay all right okay or are you going to and and that's it's actually pretty cool because it'll embed the link uh who had the who had the next question addy yes hi terry so quick question um if i don't want to type in all the names you know we have mm -hmm. like a hundred <laughs> um if I share the link, then I'll just have to set it to public so they well, can see Well, or that, it. or if you just want to share it with your class, we can embed it into Blackboard. Oh, we can embed stream into Blackboard. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, and I'll show you okay. how to, uh, hold on, I got to put that on my, my to-do list. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I'm going to come back here. So. Uh, so I've created my group and I can, uh, again, uh, one of the options is to share by group. Um, the other option that I have is that um, um, I can also um, um, back here. Okay, so the other option I have is uh, we need to hold off on that. Okay, the other option I have is I can also, um, I can embed the, the video into, into, into Blackboard. Um, now, what I did here is um, after I finished all of my um, options, if I click apply or I click cancel, this just takes me to the video repository. This just takes me to the video repository in stream. So I'm actually looking at the video much like I would um, looking at a video in, um, uh, in uh, say, a YouTube account. And so you have a bunch of different settings here. I can go full screen. Uh, I'm not sure what theater mode is. I have some settings. Um, and then, but down here, I have my share options. And so what I can do is I can, on my share options, I click that and I click embed and click copy and then I can go back to my blackboard and go to blackboard actually let me go back one That page go. Too many, too many pages open on my computer. Um, by the way, the other thing that we also have here, I didn't know if I, I didn't mention this, is I also have a, uh, my transcript once. This takes about, it takes a few minutes for this to load up to stream, and then about another five or 10 minutes to get your transcript to go. Um, again, I'm gonna click share, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just, uh, there's a couple of ways to do this. But uh, I'm just, instead of doing the embed code, I'm gonna just click share. And then I'll go to my Blackboard course. And in any of my content areas, I'll go to build content and web link. Paste the URL. And when I do that, I click on that and opens up the video within with the transcript within 
um, uh, within my uh, 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 stream account. So can this is what they'll be able to see. Jared, yes. Can you tell them how to edit the transcript. Yeah, I will. Um, I've, I've actually got that. Okay. Never mind. I, I have a question. Yes. So when you click web link, then mm -hmm. then then what do you do? Do you click HTML or what? No, no, no. You just go into you just go into after you've copied the web link from from stream, uh -huh. just go to Blackboard and click web link. Uh huh. And then just paste the URL in here. Okay. Perfect. Now, Thank you. the other option is embed code. And this is just, this is a little bit more, has more function to it, um, is that I uh, go ahead and click copy on the embed code. Mm -hmm. And I click copy and I go to Blackboard. And then I can click this HTML button. All right, I got it. And then paste that in there and click update. Mm -hmm. And then this way. So two ways to do it. Yeah. And click submit. And so now, oh. And I can actually do this. I don't have to do, I can do this um, by using item. Um, but I actually do this and to see, as you can see, now it, it, it populates as actually the video, and then you play it, and it begins to play. So there's two options here, is, and there, I've got a tutorial that I'm sharing with you guys. Um, I've actually shared an entire folder of stream tutorials, and the stream tutorial just has it as a web link, but if you want this, it's the embed code. I'll have to come up with a tutorial for that. But that's just a real quick way to do it, another way to do it if you wanna have a nice looking video. Either way, there is no storage and you're not taking up any storage space at all in Blackboard here. This is all, um, uh, this is all straightforward, um, uh, straightforward use of your uh, Blackboard tool. So um, you don't have, you're not, you're not taking up any room. It's just a link. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about is um, over here and Adela asked me about it, so I might as well just hit that really quick. Um, is um, is editing your transcript, and that is amazingly easy. Like for example, this is no your old sports cars, and it should be K N O W. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click edit, highlight it, and type K N O. W and save. And now I've edited my transcript. Um, oh, geez. This guy keeps talking in my ear. He's really annoying. Every, every time I hit submit, it, it plays the video. Um, so as you can see, um, you, can ha you can really kind of edit this thing to make it work a little bit better for you. I had an email this morning from a, a faculty out of the School of Pharmacy, and they said when they have their tutorials loaded up into um, uh, into uh, YouTube, it always gets the pharmaceutical name wrong. So if you've got terms that are really difficult, just take a minute to go through your transcript. And as you can see, it's very, this is a one minute video. But you can see it's timed, everything's perfect. Um, if you record your video and you put, and you kind of tend to put some pacing into it, whereas you're a little bit more, a little slower and a little bit more uh, 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 paced on your video, then it's gonna record it like this and it makes it really easy to find and edit and make changes um, to your transcript so that uh, it's, it's right. Oops. So. Voila, now I have uh, proper nouns for stuff. Um, 
the last thing I want to add is this is a really cool thing is that you can add a quiz into your presentation using Microsoft Forms. And so the way this works is that um, you can, I'm going to go ahead and come back to this first one and then I'll show you how to do it. Okay. Okay, so I get down to this point playing on playback. And notice that it says open sports car quiz. So now I have a quiz on this video. Click on that. And this pulls me back into Microsoft Forms. And um, it's going to load forever here because I've actually taken the quiz and testing it. So it, uh, it's, it's going to uh, take a second to load and it probably won't give it to me. So, but it's very cool that I can in, in insert a quiz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the second one that we just uploaded. Uh, as you can see, as I mentioned earlier, it does take a few minutes for your transcript, depending on how long your video is, to upload. So be patient with the transcript. So I'm just going to click interactivity right now. Uh, when this, by the way, when this is loaded, then you'll get another tab in here for the transcript. Um, and then I'm going to click add form. Um, now, the two options it gives me are at uh, your uh, paste URL here and name of your form. So to do this, right, to do this, I actually have to go over to Microsoft Forms first to create my form or my quiz. And to do that, um, again, it's that it's a very similar, very familiar process. You go into Microsoft. Uh, Office 365, click on forms, um, gives you a button that says new form. But if you click the drop down arrow, um, then you're going to click um, new quiz. And the difference between a quiz and a form is the quiz has right and wrong answers. Okay. So you just write your question, come up with the options. How many of you, have most of you used forms at one time or another? Um, uh, no, I haven't, but uh, looks good. <laughs> barely, it's, it's extremely easy to use. Um, it's, it as, it's as easy as I just did it. Um, it, it looks very similar to making a quiz in Blackboard. Uh, but a little faster. And, um, and just a caveat, the, if you do a quiz in forms, there is not a tie-in, any tie-in whatsoever to Blackboard. This is great for those, uh, um, uh, for those low impact, you know, you've narrated your PowerPoint, you're introducing your students to a new concept, uh, as part of your flipped classroom, and at the end of the PowerPoint, you ask two or three quick questions, and then move on. A um, couple of quick things. One, every, this is a little annoying, but there's not much you can do about it. I would suggest that you put your quiz at the end of the presentation, because for every question you have, you have to create a separate quiz or a separate form. So if you put three questions into a PowerPoint, you have to put make three separate forms. Yeah, and you have to do what I'm doing three separate times. If you wait to the end of the presentation, then you only have to do one quiz with three questions. So I've asked my questions. I've selected my answers. I'm gonna choose a correct answer. And then if I wanna do an another question, and I can do fill in the blank. I can do, um, there's a couple of other question types I can do. Um,
Okay. And so those are my answers. I'm going to check my correct answer. And uh, I'm done. Come over here and click share. And remember, it asked me for the link to the URL. So I just click this button right here under share and collect responses. Come back to my old sports cars. Uh, do a control V or right click and click paste to paste the URL in place. And uh, click add the timeline. Lead. I do need to put a plate, I need to make sure that I go through the presentation and decide where that's going to go on my timeline. So I'm going to edit right there. Um, call it quiz. Um, add the timeline. 15, add the timeline. We're good to go. So now, as I play my video, Okay, and now I'm going to click on, oops, um, and then I wait for my quiz to load. And now, as you can see, since I hadn't taken this quiz before, uh, since I haven't taken the quiz before, um, I can now take it. So I'm going to say that's pretty sure that's two seats. Scroll down, they're shaped like overturned bathtubs. Click submit and give it a sec. And then view results. Ooh, I got them both right. And then, by the way, you can add it and mention this. You can add when you ask your question in forms, um, there is a place where if you're doing a quiz, you can. Uh, add points. Okay. And you just edit the edit it and where it says points. And that's the big difference between the form and the point and the uh, uh, and the uh, uh, quiz and the form and the quiz. The quiz has a right or wrong answer and you add points to it. So now I've taken my quiz, I've done my video, I've edited my transcript, um, and I've shared it three ways, in a group, as an embed code, and as a link. Um, let's see, so I've created a group, shared the video, accessed the transcription tool, uploaded the video to stream, added a quiz, and I think that's it. Wow, that was quick. So some people have asked about the grade for the for the quiz. Okay, I'm um, so, so so there is no I can't marry my grade center to to uh, uh, my Blackboard grade center. I can't if I do a quiz. I can't the grades won't post in the Blackboard. You'll have to uh, manually uh, access the grades. And to do that, let me share my screen again. And to do that, I just go back to Microsoft Forms. And I click on Responses. And then I click on Responses. And there's this option that shows me how many people got each question right. And I have a download here in Excel, and it will download um, the um, these quiz. Come on, talk to me. And then um, when I download, excuse me, when I download the quiz, it says who took it what their score was, woohoo, and um, any other feedback that, uh, stuff like that. So it gave me, uh, gave me both the points um, and who answered it by name, 
their email. And so then you can easily transfer that, um, just go into the grade book and transfer that information to the Blackboard. This is, to, uh, forms is one of my favorite toys in the entire, um, in the entire Microsoft set of tools. And they've got, and, and stream is number, is quickly becoming number two because it's very easy once you get the hang of it two or three times bringing stuff in, um, find a way, you know, uh, bring it into either save it with your group or you can just directly put it into Blackboard or embed it. No matter what, you've just got some really great ways of, of getting, getting that video or that information to students. And it's fairly, I don't know if you, I mean, it took me 35 minutes, granted, you know, granted I play with this all the time, but it took me 35 minutes to give a fairly, um, a, a fairly long description of what we did. Um, and, uh, and all it really will take us some, some time and some practice from you guys to Jerry, be able to do it. Um, Yes, Michael Clayton has a couple of questions in the chat that I suspect okay. I'm thinking about too. Okay, hold on um, just a second. Let yeah. me uh, let me get out of my share. Okay. Um. So let's see. Um. On the quiz, how many attempts you get one? Um, and then the quiz, because if you'll notice when I attempted it the second time, it wouldn't let me uh, open the quiz. Um, can we put a quiz in the media vi video? Yes, um, you can put a quiz anywhere you like. I just stuck it on the end of the video for, uh, for uh, display purposes. Um, can you choose a time and point? Yes. Um, can you move questions around? Um, yes, um, I think so. Um, I'd have to play around with it. I've never done that before. Um, hold on, let me go back to my form. And, okay. Okay. I'm, I think, yes but it's not where you'd think it'd be. So I can't, I can't really move this quiz. Um, I can't really, I can move the quiz someplace else in the video by clicking and dragging, which is kind of, uh, kind of hard to do, but you can do that. But if I wanna move the questions around, I just go to forms, go to questions, and um, then I just, hit I've got these arrows here at the top of my form first thing I have to do is just click on the question uh, so that I can edit it and then I can move that question down uh, I cannot to, see what you're doing Terrence I'm sorry I'm uh, um, sorry not sharing my I didn't realize I wasn't okay. sharing my screen hold on just a second Okay, so um, so basically what I can do here is, um, and this is, and again, Lourdes questions. Uh, Lourdes question is, um, let's see. Um, she asked me, um, basically if you could move the questions around. Um, and yes, you can. So I just went back into my questions here and, and I can just click this arrow and I can move number two down and I scroll up and sports cars have number of seats. That was question one, question two, now it's question one. So I can move the questions around in the form. Uh, the form will remain the same. In fact, if you, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but when I put, a, put the scores in, it actually gave me a score um, so I can kind of edit the form as I go along and, and uh, the res it will respond to those edits. Um, even the questions are in a different order here um, on this list right here. 
Uh, so yes, I can change, I can move the questions around. Uh, and I can also, as I said, if I've got a question on here, I think I can move. I don't, it, it looks like it's kind of hard, uh, but I'm, I'm thinking you might be able to relocate the quiz. I'm not sure. Uh, but as far as moving the questions around, yes, you can move the questions. Or you can you can change the questions. Uh, if say you have four questions at the end of the presentation or at the end of the video, then you can move those questions around. But as I said, it doesn't look like I can actually physically move the 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 the, the place where the the quiz is. Uh, let me check. Wait a minute. Okay. Ah, there we go. Hold on. Doesn't look like it, but what I can do is, um, What I can do is I can delete the form and then reposition it in the quiz. And then, and that way I can change the, the question that way. Does that help? So again, if I needed to change the, if I wanted to put the questions someplace else or move the questions around in the video, uh, I just, I would just delete them and then place them back. Into the timeline and it will place the, the question in the timeline uh, where I want to put it. So I have to delete it and then replace it. Okay, Terry, let's see. Terry, I have a question on that. Yeah. Um, would it be possible on that say same quiz you have three questions on that quiz and you put it at the end. But what if you wanted like something like this that's brand new, what if you wanted to do a pre-quiz and you put it at the front, um, but use the same quiz at the back, would you just do two forms or would it not recognize that? Or could you just, I don't know, put question number. Oh, know, let's try. One, oh, can I answer that? Can I answer that? Yeah, it looks like you can just put the same yeah. form in twice. Yeah, you can. Um, well, actually, Kathy, you'll have to do two forms. Or you can, you can do multiple, copy it. You can do multiple attempts. Oh, there is a multiple attempts button on there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can do multiple attempts. Okay. And then they can then they could answer that you know that same link as many times as as you wanted them to. And let's see. Uh, I, uh, where is the multiple attempts option, Kathy? Is it over it's here? It's under settings. And really what it is, is, is it'll, it'll, so yeah, click over to settings. And it says can only re, um, run one response per person. You have that checked. Yeah. So if you uncheck that, they can as many times as they want and do mm -hmm. that same quiz. And make sure that you have, that you um, check this record name button. Uh, by the way, if you choose anyone with a link and respond, and not only people in my organization can respond, um, I lose the ability to, to make these changes. So students are gonna be have, to have to be respond, accessing this through their UIW account. Yeah, when you, when you do the anyone with the link can respond, that's an anonymous, that it becomes anonymous then. So sometimes if you wanna do an anonymous quiz, for some reason, that's what you would do. Then no names are, unless you actually put a name field in the quiz then that would yeah. um yeah and um <coughs> okay all right uh let's see what um where's my chat Lost my chat window here. Okay. Um, okay.
Uh, can the student get feedback on their responses? Um, I, I think so. Again, you'll have to go into forms and play around with it. Um, there, there is a, um, you, can yeah. send a, you can send a response. Um, yeah. Once again, if you go into settings, but mm -hmm. it's not, you can generate an automatic response, um, but they won't get any kind of granular response. Yeah, not, you did a great job on this or something like that. Um, Also, just FYI, people can skip over test questions, but so you need to make sure that they're made, uh, they're set as required. Okay, um, let's see. Is there a way to force that they watch the video before answering the embedded questions, like Edpuzzle does? Um, no, they can go right to the, they, if, if, you know, they see where the dot is on the video, they can go right to it. Um, let's see. If you'll note it in your chat, I just posted a message here. Um, that and this is a link to a folder and all those folder um, Anna, I haven't had any, uh, I'm sorry, there's a folder that, uh, that has all the tutorials that I went over and then some, including some that, uh, that, uh, Kathy's going to do tomorrow or whoever's doing tomorrow's presentation will be going over. Um, um, oops. And, and then I, I would just, I would just say that, oh, go ahead, Terry. Uh, I, iOS, Mac. Uh, none that I can see because it works. Uh, in fact, students can actually, uh, if they have a link to it, they can actually take this quiz on forms um, uh, on their phone. Uh, go ahead, Kathy. Oh, right. So, and, and we did talk about this yesterday that we are, you know, going to upgrade, we're going to upgrade our, our, our puzzle license. So that still is something that, that people can use. And, and maybe has a little more functionality. This is uh, just probably, when I think about this, it's really just a formative assessment. I, you know, it's, it's not something that you might think about grading, but just um, understanding, just tr trying to gain understanding of what the students really, you know, uh, where they're at and, and points that they might have, have missed um, or, or uh, just some of the content area that they might have missed or misunderstood. So also when I, I see in the comments about Canvas, we, we will have when, with Canvas, we will have a, another uh, it's a component called Canvas Studio. So you, you will be able to create videos that and, and I, I think Michael, is that what you were talking about there? Or were you talking about um, and Anna, is that what you were talking about in the chat? No, nope, just straight up studio. Yep, studio tied with an existing yeah. quiz. Uh -huh. Yeah, so so studio, right? I was wondering if you were talking about um, uh, stream and, and uh, um, forms because the, the, the issue too is um, Canvas does have a tight integration with Office 365 and Blackboard does not. Um, but yes, so Canvas Studio, what Michael's talking about and maybe Anna too, is that you, you can, there'll be a function, uh, a piece there, a functionality where you can put, you know, a, a, have, a, have a video and then insert a quiz and it will go right to the grade book. So. Um, Lourdes uh, asked if there's any way to, to advance the video if the question is, if the question is correct. In other words, if they get it wrong, do they have to go back and try it again? I haven't seen that. Um, so I'm, uh, no. Um, I know some of the LMS had that capability, so I wasn't sure if we could do anything like that with this system or not. Mm -hmm. what I ask. Okay. And again, Lourdes, I, I, I was answering your question when you said, can you move questions around? So there's two ways to do it. You can either move the questions around. If you have all the questions at the end of the test, you can move the questions around within the form, or you can just delete the form, move it someplace else and reinsert it. Um, 
How many attempts? Uh, you can do multiple attempts, as, as Kathy pointed out. Um, and, but I think that's what you get, multiple attempts. So you'll have multiple times of them uh, uh, running through it. Um, I think that's about all the questions. I got three new messages down here at the bottom. Um, Michael, I like the atti your attitude. You know, test it, play with it, kick the tires. Um, and if you like it, use it. If you don't like it, you know, we probably got something else or we're working on something else. Um, and I love what different kinds of questions can be written. You can do fill in the blank, uh, David. You uh, Donald, you can do fill in the blank, multiple choice, multiple answer, um, Likert scale. Hold on, I'll. Um, 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 and then you can also have uh, another one that's kind of interesting is that you can put a quiz, a question in that ranks things. So you can say, you know, uh, are there parts of, uh, you know, I don't know what, you know, name your, name your favorite sports cars in order. And so you can make, put rank things in order. And then the other one that you can do, as I said, uh, is, um, uh, you can do multiple answer. And by the way, you can also, um, part of your tool that you have in um, in your PowerPoint, you can actually, if you look at your recording page, you can actually input the form into the PowerPoint as well. Um, so you can do it, you can do it to the video or if you want to do it, you can input the thing into the PowerPoint. Um, Allison, uh, Blackboard space available for each course is 2K. Um, and um, there is a way to tell how many K that you've got. Um, Adela, can you mention that? That's so you can see how many, uh, how big your course is before you start throwing stuff at it. Sure. You want me to share my screen? Yeah, will you? I, I, uh, that would be great. Thank you. Alrighty. Do I need to unshare? Oh, I'm not sharing. Never mind. Okay. So here's my here's my blackboard. I will go into our flipped learning course. And if you were in um, last week in the course copy, I kind of went over it a little bit. Um, to see how big your course is, you go down to Packages and Utilities, and in the Export Archive link, click on that, and then click Export Package. And there's a button here that will calculate the size of your course. And that's all there is to that. So the course limit is two gigs now. Um, there's also this other button here, um, the copy links and include copies. And that might change the size of your course depending on um, how, many, how many things are, uh, you have uploaded. But that's really all there is to it. Thanks, Adela. Um, uh, and the reason it's 2K, it's always been 2K, but Blackboard let us and everybody else get away with more than 2K per course. But now that storage is at a premium because everybody's online, uh, they're cracking down on us big time. Is that, is that about how, is that, is that a good synopsis, Kathy? <laughs> do, you need to, do I need to add anything? <laughs> 
No, no, it's just, it's just really that. Yeah, no, that's good. Okay. Thank you, Terry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and, and as far as forms go, go play with it. It is so much fun to use. Um, when uh, when form, forms, we first got forms about three or four years ago. And my first, the first thing I did was whenever I have training, I sent everybody a form so they could order their lunch. And I just had the Jimmy John's menu on a form and uh, made, made ordering lunch really great. So once I figured out that I could make ordering lunch, ordering food for 25 people really easy, I was sold. <laughs> Okay. Do, are there any more, are any more questions for Terry? Uh, okay. Well, well, again, Terry, do you have, do you want to, you want to sign us off? In that really yeah. Um, thank you so much for your time. We're, um, I'm enjoying uh, doing these presentations every couple of weeks and I appreciate the fact that you guys are here. It's really nice. We have a, we have a, I think, 45 at one point or 50 at one point. Uh, so it's really nice that we have a really strong audience coming to them. And if you have any ideas for presentations or there's something you'd like to know, um, feel free to drop a line to Kathy or Adela or I, and uh, we'll see if we can not do something with it. If it's something that we have available, um, and it would benefit everybody. We'll be more than happy to throw it out there and let you guys uh, learn how to use it. It's um, because there's just a ton of technology out there and um, most of it doesn't, isn't hard to get used to. Um, I can remember the old days when I first started teaching people how to use Microsoft and it was just a, it was a horror sometimes. Now it's like some of these tools they come up with, you can, I've learned them in, in, in maybe a half hour session and, uh, and you will too. Um, they'll be, you'll, you know, you'll make a mistake or two, but as Michael said, you know, beat up on it, play with it, see if you can get it to do what you want it to do. And if it does go for it. Uh, and of course the team's here to help you at any time, um, that you need to, um, to help you learn and, and you and, and put the tool to the best use. I have a question, Terry. Yes, Sam. Um, I think I've asked this of Kathy too. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a, like a sheet of paper or something where you say step one, step two, step three, like that? And actually, <laughs> if you look in the, if you look at your chat and uh, here, I'll just toss it in there one more time. I think that's it. Wait a minute, that's not it. Something else. Uh, yeah, um, I just put it in the chat. This is a folder. It's a link to a folder, and this folder has a tutorial for everything I covered today, step by step. Um, okay. It was made for people like me who don't follow directions very well. So, uh, you yeah, know, so it's um, so it's kind of works pretty well. I put big squares around the button you're supposed to put on. And I, and to make sure that you see which one, it, what it's called, I put it in bold. So, um, as I said, it's idiot proof because after I write them, I can do them. So if I can follow them, anybody can. Um, but that folder's for everybody. And actually uh, some of the things that, and this is coming stream, downloading a document and upload it from, you know, taking your Zoom video. There's one in there for taking your Zoom video. Uh, uploading it to stream and then taking it from stream and putting it into Blackboard. So there's uh, lots of really good stuff in there. So feel free to click on that link, book, be sure and bookmark it, and uh, then you'll always have access to it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or if anybody wants to stick around, um, you know, we're more than happy just to help you if you have like one-on-one -on -one questions or things like that. Um, we're more than happy to help you. Tomorrow we'll be talking about, I should turn on my video here. Tomorrow uh, we'll be talking about that screen capture piece in stream and really um, creating a, a screen capture right in stream so you don't have to bring it in um, 
to stream. So that will be uh, tomorrow's topic. So we hope to see you then. Great. But if you have any questions, feel free to stay. We'll hang around a little bit and uh, answer any questions. We can go to breakout rooms if we need to. Thank you. Uh, have a good day. Apollo, Apollo hey. you Bye. look like the leader Bye. of an evil empire with your <laughs> ship in the background. It's awesome. <laughs> Hey, man. <laughs> I, I, I have a question I was hesitant to sure. ask. Yes, have a good one. <clears throat> yes, uh, Dr. Hinosa. Uh, I have my course uh, divided or, or, or organized into folders. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to cover uh, in unit one, I'm going to cover five themes, uh, Native Americans, <clears throat> the European settlement, uh, problems with the mother country, and so on. So I have four or five folders, and all the PowerPoints are organized in these folders. Uh, now, if you move it, if you move a PowerPoint into stream, it seemed like you, the instructions you were giving it just moves it into a general cat, a general file rather than a folder. Okay. So what you can do, um, like for example, if you want to move something into stream. Um, there's a couple of things you can do. You have that, that function that allows you to create groups. But Terry, can I, say, can I say one thing first? Yeah. I, um, Gil, are, you, are they just saved? Are they narrated PowerPoints or PowerPoints? Some of them, well, the, the way I have them is I have them regular PowerPoints. I have them narrated. And then one of the things that I do whenever I have a narrated PowerPoint or just an ordinary PowerPoint, I also produce an outline for the students. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, I, I, so the folder has the outline, mm -hmm. the objectives of the topic, and it has the PowerPoint by itself, and then often the narrated PowerPoint. Sometimes I don't have both for, for, for one or the other. Well, I would say this just, and Terry, you can see what you think about it. A PowerPoint does, is not that big. It doesn't take up that much space. Yeah. Right. So I, I, there's some things you just never are going to put in stream and, and just a regular PowerPoint. I, push, you know, you might oh, not you just, right like, just put it on. Now. Okay. Yeah, All you're right. fine. You're, I think you're fine. And, and, and Gil, as, as I said, if you want to, I mean, and you can, again, keep all that stuff within that centralized folder system that you have is if you record a PowerPoint, save it as a PowerPoint show and then just bring it into Blackboard because again, that show is 90% smaller than an MP4. So you're not going to, you know, you're not going to have a, you're not going to have a two gig PowerPoint show. You're going to have, you know, a, 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 you know, maybe a couple of megs, but that's about it. You know what, Dr. Nahosa, uh, you, shared your, you shared a folder with me this afternoon? Yes, yes. that's an example of what I was talking about, Adela. No. I'm just looking at one of your PowerPoints and it's 992 megs. So that's almost a gig. Yeah. That's a very wow. Yeah, because it has clips. I mean, it's, it's a show, uh -huh. right? So, yeah. <laughs> I applaud you. Yeah. In that case, that might be something. We, need to, we need to start moving some of your stuff to set your stuff to the cloud. Okay. The, other, the other thing about the limits to PowerPoint why do we have to keep all the courses way back to eight years ago? Oh, good question. We're, we're, we're going to make some space overall if yeah. I had just the last three years or something like that. So we're, we're going to have you lead the charge because we are going to um, archive those and move those as well. We're, we're going to, um, in September, we didn't want to hit everybody with it right now because there's so many but yeah we are gonna we are gonna move those courses like from 2012 is that what you're talking about in 13. Right, right. I mean right. I, I, I Thank you. back there Thank I go you. back a year back and see well what did I do last year and so, then I decide well did that I don't remember if it worked or not you know. So how many how many years do you think we should keep in Blackboard would you say for faculty like what's just what would be the amount of years? Well I think you the, the issue is uh, here you ought to ask someone who's full-time faculty rather than, than, than yours truly because, <clears throat> because of enrollments, it turns out now I'm only teaching the intro courses. Sure. But a uh, full-time faculty would have an array of courses. I would say three years or something like that. You know? Kind of what we were thinking. <laughs> so, 
all everything, however, I have is saved uh, to an external drive anyway. Okay, perfect. So, but it's <clears throat> it, it, it when I go back to the to the to the course, I can see the order in which I gave this lecture or that lecture, as opposed to the way it's in my in my external drive. Right, right. So. That is something we are gonna, we are going to do. We're going to archive just archive the older courses, and we will we'll probably do that. I think we I think we think we're doing it in October. I think that's the date. But we wanted to let faculty get in and not hit them with that. Right it, won't, it won't make a difference because we can always find the information. It just won't be, you know, right there. If we keep three or four years, that's what we thought. The great thing about the uh, faculty once said about the. You know everything you have to do at the beginning. You know it, it's it's really interesting to do all this thing, but why does it all happen to be at the beginning of the year? Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. So we're Just, saving some of our good stuff for October. <laughs> that's fine. And November. Um, that's that's the only question I had. Yeah. In, in other words, I I had wanted to to upload something into stream. Uh, and the advantage I see, and yet maybe I'm wrong on this, is that if you upload it to stream, then let's say that big file that Adela, the big file that I had in there, if I uploaded it to stream, then I could only, I could then just put the link on Blackboard. Yes. And that way it would reduce the, uh, the amount of uh, space on Blackboard. And remember the other thing, and I, um, we, you can always, as long as you have it in OneDrive, you can change it. You can change the PowerPoint. You can change, you know, alter the video as long as you save it to that same, you know, place. And the link doesn't change, right? So it's not a new link. Right, right. Well, that's the advantage too of not Im embedding, of having a link, is that you can you can alter the file and not have to worry about the link. It's always the same. So. That's an advantage for sure. So. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Janosa. Great to see you. You're muted, buddy. Unless you're singing to yourself. Okay. I think she's having mic problems. Can you hear me now? Uh, I can hear you. Oh, good. I don't know what happened earlier. I think my thing was just not connected. But I typed my question in there. So I have YouTube videos that I post. And I've started checking some of them to make sure that they have closed captioned. But for those that don't, can I import a video into stream and then have it captioned and then post? Yes. In fact, I had that same question for one of your colleagues this morning because okay. she said that the drug names were getting all screwed up. Okay. Um, so yes, um, you just have to have the original video to upload. Okay. But once you have that, um, yeah, God, I am, I am amazed.